pleasure. Okay. So some people, you know, I think, well, do I really want to come for a clearing for that? What does that really mean? And even though it may seem like it, it doesn't feel like, oh, that's really not for me, I'm telling you straight up, everything is for you. <laughs> I don't care what the clearing is, it will change something inside of you, okay? So receiving, it's like more than just, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of facets of receiving. When we think about receiving pleasure, what do we think? You know, sometimes we think about just the, the energy or the receiving pleasure being sexual. But it's more than that. It's receiving. It's like receiving love, receiving touch, receiving connection. And the ability to, to have that and have the heart open so that you really feel within your own self. I remind you, what we feel inside is all based on how open we are, how open our heart is. So, like I said before, just because someone says, oh, I love you, I care about you, hi there, um, it doesn't mean that you're going to feel or sense that. There's a couple of seats over here. So, you can actually feel in your body, like, uh, almost like an energetic block, you know? So, even at the thought of receiving, like, the pleasure, the, so even pleasure, what I call eye candy. Eye candy is things like, well, it can be anything for some people. <laughs> it, might be, it might be beautiful scenery, or it might be animals, or it might be artwork, or it might be nature, flowers, things of that nature. I did have a friend way back in California who, him, eye candy was beautiful women, okay? So, but to be able to just have pleasure in what we sense, what we see, what we feel, and to take that in, it isn't about anything out here, this is my point. If we see something and we don't have any sense or feeling, and we see a beautiful arrangement or we see a beautiful piece of art, and our part, you know, and our, we go, oh yeah, that's really cool, really pretty, but we don't feel anything. It's not because it's, it's coming from outside. Everything is dependent on us, us, me, you, individually, how open our heart is, how how wide we are able to open the heart and, and, and also all the different blockages in the heart. So simple things like, I hear this all the time where people go, you know, I see really beautiful things but I don't feel anything. As though something out there is supposed to make them feel something. It doesn't work that way. Your ability to feel this feeling of pleasure or this feeling of enjoyment is coming from inside and the blocks inside. So that's why we do these kinds of group clearings and we're doing topic specific because what it does and topic specific is it holds, when you're, think, when you're thinking about different things that, like for example, this today is about pleasure. When you think about different things, it, what it happens in your energy field is it lights up the blockages. It lights up what is inhibiting and blocking you from your own feelings. Remember I said before, some of you were here, some of you weren't. If I cut my hand and say, feel my pain, you're not going to feel my pain. You can't. You can only have an association with my pain. It's the same thing with emotions. It's the same thing with love. It's the same thing with compassion. It's the same thing with all the feelings that we have. They're already in the <coughs> So that ability to open and receive pleasure is coming, the inability, I should say, the inability to open and feel is coming from inner blocks. It is not coming from anything external. Have you ever noticed that when you're in a good mood and you're feeling really happy and you're feeling really loving towards people and then something happens and you have a reaction and you kind of shut down and then you can't feel how you enjoy or how you're loving or how you really feel about each other? I'm sure, I know everyone has done this. I know everyone knows what I'm talking about. It isn't dependent on what's outside. That other person is not causing you to shut your heart down. The other person is not causing you to withhold your love. It's all coming from within. One of the reasons for the, the clearings is to start clearing out the energy that's not you so that you don't continue to have these same kind of reactions. Ultimately, in the really evolved higher consciousness teachings and 
and people that are really truly more awake, they're not having those kinds of reactions. They're not whipped around by their own emotions based on what happens in the external world. There's a stability, there's a centeredness. So that's what we're all in some way looking for. We're looking for our own liberation, our own happiness, and the ability to stay centered no matter what's happening is evolutionary. It's like this is what we're all moving towards. So I've created group clearings to assist people to start clearing out what is not them. Okay, now we all think, all right, so in my life I've had this happen and I felt like betrayed or I had this abandonment or I felt unworthy or, you know, I was abused. Whatever you experienced, those are all factors that also make you start to close down your heart. If you were born into a culture that had awareness, you would be t taught from the very beginning, it would be in your parents as well, that the external reality has nothing to do with you and with how you're reacting or responding. And what you'd also learn is that in the midst of everything, in the midst of trauma, in the midst of shock, in the midst of loss, in the midst of horror or terror or whatever, you keep the heart open. And I had the question out, how do you keep the heart open and still let this energy move? It's very simple, actually. You know what love feels like. So all you have to do is how, remember the feeling of love, or even just think about somebody that you love, or situations or times when you really felt that, and you can start to activate and open up the heart center. And then as energy is moving through the body that is dealing with, or is a sensation or feeling of pain or hurt or anguish, or you know the, the, the feelings of um, disappointment or even envy and jealousy, all of those energies, it doesn't matter what it is, every emotion can move through the body and be released, especially when you keep your heart open. And, it's, and, it, and it, do, it works. It's like you can feel love while still feeling pain, or whatever those feelings are, and they do shift and move. They do leave the body. When you do that, you're not burying it again and creating more and more, more resistance to opening the heart. Pain is not love. Love is not pain. They're totally separate. But we kind of associate love with, with pain. <laughs> someone leaves, someone passes, someone goes away, and we connect that, and we've got to close the heart. I remember, I remember as a teenager, as a oh, God, you guys, as a teenager, after my first, first love, you know, that first big love, and that ends, it was so painful. I never, it's like, I don't even remember that kind of excruciating pain sense, but I remember that decision I made, like, I am never going to open, I'm never going to love again. And I felt that. And so, this is true, I, so for years and years and years, I even got married, had kids, but I can always feel this little bit of like a withhold. Based on that decision I made, like at 14 years old, okay? So it, it took years and years and years for me to really realize and understand and wake up and start making shifts and changes around that, but I was aware of it. And it's like a little bit of a withhold. A little bit of a protection. Don't put, don't, don't put both feet in the relationship because something might happen. And then I'll sub subject myself to feeling that hurt again. You guys, we all do it. We all do it in some way. You know? Until we don't. So, clearings will help with all of this. So, clearings, let me just share a little bit. Most of the energy, the thoughts the, that, that you're experiencing are not really you. They're coming from experiences in past incarnational traumas, dramas. They're coming from other people. If in the womb with your mom, as you're in that gestation period, you're drinking in your mother's energy. You're taking in her beliefs, her fears, her phobias, her angers, her angst, everything that she's experiencing, you're taking it in thinking it's you. So oftentimes, even, and then also then we have the birth. So most, most tra a lot of trauma does happen during the birth, especially if you're over eight hours in labor. They've proven that there's a lot of trauma in infants with the going through birth. So if you don't release those energies, they stay in you. So your mother's energy is not you. Duh, right? Okay. So also what happens is as you're growing up, 
your mom and your dad want the best for you to the best of their ability and they push their will onto you. They push their energy into your body. This is perpetrator energy. This is not an entity. This is emotional energy. Okay, like, so I remember my kids not letting them, we live in the country, so it didn't really, we didn't have like streets, but kids, you know, parents worried about their kids going out in the street, so there's an energy in the, in the body, and the, kid, the ball rolls out, and the mother's like, you know, whacking the kid with her energy, wanting it to not run out to the street. Well, that energy doesn't just leave their body once it's been imprinted in them. And then sometimes, you know, you've heard of this, you know, parents want their, their kids to grow up and be like a doctor, or an attorney, or Indian chief, or whatever, okay? So, <laughs> their desire, their will is being pushed into your body. Your dad's and your mom's. Sometimes they, you know, like for example, kids start running amok, that's going to happen. And then the parent wants to control, control, control. Well, guess what? Even more and more and more, your parent's energy comes into your body. Is that you? No. The other component, which is huge, is the entities, disincarnate beings, people that have died and have not gone into the light, that have come into your body because there's a matching frequency or because they know you, either from this incarnation or another, or because you can have, uh, they can also have an opposite polarity with you. So if you're if you're broken and like a, you know like broken and incompetent, then you're gonna then sometimes these stronger energies will come in to take over your energy to take over your body, and you just don't know what's inside. But these are not you either. None of these are you. Okay. Then we also have what we call interferences from other dimensions. It's very common. And these interferences can be in the form of implants, energetic implants. They can be in the form of creature-looking insect things. It can be in, in crab-looking, octopus-looking energies, blob energies that come into the body. Oftentimes, these are actually sent into your physical body. We also have interferences, what we call like the dark forces, powers of darkness. And if you've had any kind of experience in any of your soul's journey, your soul's evolution, if you've ever in any way been confronted with or connected to or utilized and, and taken advantage of in dark energy for personal gain, personal wealth, whatever, to have power over, then there's going to be an interference. Even in your past incarnational experiences, when you have had trauma or, any, or some kind of physical injury or experiences that were really intense or really uncomfortable or really traumatic, losses, um, imprisonment, physical blows to the body, beheadings, hangings, um, uh, anything that's happened to the physical body, if you didn't let the energy move through that experience, that can still be in your soul imprint and still with you in your physical life right here, right now. That's still not you. So, those physical things can actually cause physical um, disturbance or damage or pain in this physical body. I have hundreds and hundreds of stories of people coming in with some kind of physical pain or something physical happening, go to doctors, MRIs, all kinds of different things, no, there's nothing wrong, can't find it, it must be psychological. Oh, wait a second. Let's take out the damage or whatever happened in the past and see what happens then. Entities that come into your body with illnesses and diseases and um, broken bones or anything that they have lived can imprint you with that as well. Even things like addictions. I have had people with addictions take out all the entities and the addiction's over. Just like that. So that too is not you. My point is, in clearings, we're taking out what is not you, bringing back more of what is you, so that you can really be more of who you are. It's really about your own liberation. It's about your authenticity. It's about your divine light. It's about you just being exactly who you are. With these interferences, you cannot know yourself. 
You cannot. I have people that even taking out one little thing has shifted their life tremendously, like a miracle just happened. And other people are so inundated with energies inside of them, around them, that they are almost completely no longer inhabiting the physical body. So when that happens, we have to you know, be nice and easy and just kind of gently take out, don't do too much, because they're still, they don't know who they are, and then bring in more and more back. So in the clearing, we take out, but we also bring back. When you have trauma or shock or any kind of pain or anything that doesn't feel good inside, those aspects of you that did leave, that did jump out, however, they, however that happened, do not want to come back in. I see it all the time. When I'm doing a clearing on somebody, I always check into the pieces that I'm seeing because they'll present. I'll go, you ready to come back in? And they, if they're not, I go, okay, show me what else. We clean that up then they're ready to come back in. It's, it's pretty astounding, actually. So you have all these pieces of you that get fractured, that get separated, that leave, and we really want to bring it all back. <clears throat> but like I said, if you've got a lot of somebody else's energy, a lot of entities, you've got emotional energy that's not yours in your body, and you've got implants, all these different things, why would you want to be in your physical body? And then, how many of you in your life, maybe way back, or somewhere in your life where you said, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I'm thinking almost everybody has had that thought at least once in their life. Okay? Guess what happens when you do that? You open the door for others to come in. <clears throat> a lot of people <clears throat> that um, are suicidal, a lot of suicidal depression, anxiety, things of that nature, a lot of stuff is not them. Take the stuff out, bring more in. Depression, you know, miraculously is gone. Anxiety, miraculously gone. It wasn't them, okay? So clearings are about clearing what is not you. Because truthfully, who you are is a divine being. You're just divine light. At the core of your being, that's all you are. And it's all this other stuff in the way that makes you feel like you're not good enough, you're not important, you don't matter, you're unworthy, you're unlovable, and all these on and on and on negative thoughts. Well, it just attracts more and more and more and more of the same. So your bodies get filled up with things that are not you. So uh, pe most people, even in some of the other a lot of alternative healing modalities, they do deal with entity removal. It's, it's a pretty common thing nowadays. <clears throat> the thing is, is Oftentimes, most people think or believe or see or sense that you only have a few interfering with you. A few entities. You know, a few, few interferences. I tell you right now, you got hundreds. Sometimes over a thousand things inside of you. And just entities inside of you that are not you. Pretty creepy, huh? <laughs> And you've been living with them a long time, so you think they're you, and they <coughs> think they're you. So sometimes when they really anchor in and dig in, some, sometimes they're like full body, sometimes they're in the skin, <coughs> sometimes they're in the organs, they can be anywhere. But the ones that really are strong want to, take, want to live through you, and some of your thoughts and your feelings and your addictions and your desires and your beliefs are not you. They're coming from other things inside of your physical body. So, clearings are like vital, they're important. I don't care where you get them, just get them. <laughs> you know, you got someone who does it, do it. And it will change your life. And the good, you know what's really cool? I had someone just tell me the other day, what she liked about the work was, it's very passive. You don't have to do anything, you just, well, at a private session you have to lay there, but in a <laughs> clearing you sit here, and you do nothing more than that, and occasionally I'll have you think about something and light up the feeling, <clears throat> by feeling it, and then we clear it, and I have to check in again, and it's like, wow, magic happens, and you don't have to do hardly anything at all, but think about something or feel a little bit into something. So that's the same thing here. Now, to get the most out of your clearing here, what's really important is when you think about or feel into something, if you just use your head and light it up with your mind by thinking about it, then that's what I get, I get mind energy. I get your thoughts. Okay? What I want is I want the feeling of it. Meaning, 
So today's topic is receiving pleasure. However that looks to you, however that feels to you, you know, seeing something beautiful and just feeling that pleasure in your own heart, feeling the pleasure of touch, feeling the pleasure of sounds, whatever that pleasure is, what I want you to do is feel the resistance or the block to that. Okay, once you feel the energy, like maybe you think about something like, for example, let's pretend like, okay, I look at something beautiful, I don't feel anything. Okay, that's not where I want you to stop. What I want you to do then is, okay, now I know, okay, yes, I don't feel anything, but how does that make me feel? How do I feel? How does that emotionally feel when I can't feel something? Maybe there's a slight edge of sadness. Or maybe there's a slight edge of anger, frustration. Whatever that is, be with that feeling. Okay, so if you feel a tinge of sad, be there. If you feel a tinge of frustration, be there. But now we're going to take it a little bit deeper. Because that's still your consciously awake energy that you're aware of. So let's say you feel some frustration first and underneath you can feel a little bit of sadness, okay? So you stay with that. The more you just stay with it, don't move away from it, just be with it, then you'll be able to go underneath that feeling. See, the key is stay with what you feel without judgment, thoughts, trying to get away, no resistance. Be with that, and then have the desire to know what's underneath that. And then you take that as far under as you can. So maybe underneath the sadness, there might be another range of something else. Maybe it'll feel like fear. We don't know. But whatever that is, now you're saying yes. Bring it on. Show me. I want to know. I want to feel what's inside of me. Because if you do that, then energy can be moved. If you don't, you got the lid on. Okay? So whatever that feeling is, be with it, and then go a little bit deeper. When you do that, what happens for me is you light up all the different components that I just described. Okay? Entities, implants, perpetrator energies, all the different components, and then you start clearing them. So the more you can participate in that way, it's not about telling your stories. You don't have to say a word. All you need to do is be willing to face and feel and I'm not talking feeling on the dropping on the floor crying. I'm just talking be with it. <coughs> because everyone has a tendency to move away from. You know, as soon as a feeling comes, you don't want to, it's like, eh, not going there. Don't go there. Stay up here. Nothing changes when you do that. So by feeling it, you light up and it presents in your energy field what the blockages are, what the interferences are, what are contributing to your experience. So, that's all I need from you. You do your part, I'll do my part. Okay? And then also, relax your body. And then when I do say, when I ask you to get out of the way, what I mean by that is, as soon as you have the feeling, and as soon as you've lit it up for me, I don't need you to do it anymore. So you can just forget about it. You can let yourself either just think about something else, or probably the best thing to do is just listen to my voice. Okay? and then relax, and then also you're going to call my presence in to be right beside you. And you'll feel me right there, as though I'm literally reaching into your body. The more you can go under, under, under. So let's start that process of going under.